The Cosmic Black Gene, Melanin and the Origin of Mankind. Scientists have found the skeletal remains of various hominids. These hominids include anatomically modern humans, like ourselves, and ape men. To explain the presence of these diverse hominids, scientists created the theory of evolution. The theory of evolution maintains that man evolved from apes. The major problem with this theory is that there are no missing links that show the transition of the various hominids from ape to man. The theory of evolution claims that man evolved from the apes into Homo habilis, handy man, then from Homo habilis to Homo erectus, erect man, and finally anatomically modern humans, those people who we call man today. The major problem with this theory is that scientists have not found a missing link. Skeletal remains that illustrate the transition of one hominid into the next. To explain this transition, scientists claim that various types of man resulted from crossbreeding or punctuated equilibrium in an attempt to revise Darwin's theory of evolution. Punctuated equilibria is a theory that new species evolve suddenly over, over brief periods of time followed by longer periods during which there is no genetic change. Crossbreeding is the process to produce hominids by the mating of individuals of individuals from different hominid types and races to produce a new hominid. All of these are good models for the rise of buried hominids, but they fail to satisfactorily explain the existence of these hominids in eight men. Recent genetic research suggests that genetics may play a role in the rise of mankind and the varied races instead of crossbreeding or punctuated equilibrium. This method was the interplay between melanin, the cosmic black gene, and events in the universe. The theory of a cosmic black gene or melanin as a catalyst for the existence of the varied races and hominids it's based on the idea of rapid changes in human physiology, physiological differences in pigmentation, body type, and etc. is due to an algorithm in DNA instead of evolution. People attempt to deny that race exists, but you can tell the difference between someone who has European, mongoloid, or Negro ancestry. In addition, skeletal remains make it clear that varied hominids have existed throughout human history. Anthropologists have presented evidence that Europeans probably evolved from African ancestors while the Mongoloid group developed from an Australoid ancestor. The Australoids and the Africans are both black races according to N.N. Cheboskov in Races and Peoples Contemporary Ethnic and Racial Problems. These blacks who originated in Africa later migrated to other lands where they transmuted into other human types. The various races of mankind result therefore from the interaction between the cosmic black genes and genome DNA which is coded to produce new populations from the original African model. To avoid the idea that Europeans and Asians evolved from Negroid, Africans, and Australoids Sometimes scientists claim that Europeans originated from the ape man Heidelbergensis, who also originated in Africa. Other researchers claim that the ancestors of Asians was the ape man Denisovians. The black race is highly pigmented. The pigmented element in the skin is called melanin. This element is in all vital parts of the body such as the brain, the eye, and etc. The cosmic gene is probably responsible for the transmutation of the original seed people, black people that is, into the various modern races. The cosmic dust or gene is primarily carbonaceous chandrites. Since carbon is black, I call the cosmic gene bacteria nigra genes or black genes. Salva de Elura in a view of life says that chains of carbon atoms alone or interspersed with other atoms are the backbones of many substances produced in living organisms. As you can see, the black gene is very important. 
Their various races appear on Earth as a result of the interaction between tectonic events and incremental shifts or complete reversals of the magnetic polarity of the Earth's magnetic field. These shifts in the magnetic polarity of the Earth's magnetic field may be the method in which new life forms appear on Earth. Ralph Gilpin in Archaeological Geology noted that during this interval there has been two magnetic reversals that occurred, one within 114,000 or 100,000 years before the present and the other within 37,000 to 32,000 years before the present. These dates for magnetic reversals are very interesting because the evidence indicates that Homo sapien neanderthalus appeared about the time of the first reversal, 100,000 years ago, and the second reversal, 37,000 to 32,000 DP, was when we see some of the earliest forms of Homo sapiens in Africa, and especially the Kaumsak man. No one knows how old the cosmic black genes or dust are that fall to Earth. Sometimes scientists claim it may contain material left over from the creation of the planet, while other scientists claim that these genes represent residue from the primordial dust and gas cloud from which the solar system originated. Although scientists do not know its age, 10,000 tons of this cosmic dust genes reach the surface each year around one particle per square yard per day. Astronomers agree that there is a correspondence between microbiological biology and astronomy. Dr. Chandra Wickramasinghe of University College Court of Wales noted that the facts as we have them show clearly that life on Earth is derived from what appears to be an all-pervasive gal galaxy-wide living system. Know that very forms of life are fixed by the organization of particular amino acids. Dr. Wick Ramasanji declared, the number of shufflings of genes needed to find life exceeds by many, many powers of 10 the number of all the atoms in the entire observable universe. A tornado blowing through an aircraft, scrap heap, has a better chance of assembling a brand new domino jet from bits of dust than light being assembled from its components by random processes. This idea that there are no ransom processes means that there has to be an initiator of these life forms. This initiator I would call God or the Creator. Since genes carry information that led to the origin of various life forms, genes must come from the Creator of all life. The present data suggests that whenever the Earth's magnetic field is reversed, there are usually tectonic changes especially volcanic eruptions. I theorize that when a volcano erupts, it puts a temporary hole in the atmosphere because it breaks down the ozone level. With the crucial ingredients of the atmosphere changed, even temporarily, the remaining atmosphere would not protect life forms from deadly light rays striking the Earth. This left life forms vulnerable to genetic tinkering. Extra cosmic radiation bearing black genes may have speeded up evolution among populations living near sources of water, which would have activated the dehydrated nigra genes and caused mutations in human species. This would account for the appearance of different hominids without the discovery of intermediate life forms showing the transition from one human species type to the next. The so-called undiscovered missing link, if my hypothesis is correct, is none other than the cosmic nigra gene. When tectonic changes take place in the earth as a result of magnetic field reversals, volcanic eruptions occur. During an eruption, carbon genes from the earth's interior and other minerals reaches the surface through volcanic emissions. These interterrestrial black genes may bond with the cosmic nigra genes and affect plant and animal life. Due to the hole blasting the atmosphere by the volcanic eruption, 
Millions of cosmic Niagara genes fall in the area under the atmospheric holes. This would in turn permeate the skin membrane of members of tribes living in the contaminated area. This would account for the discovery by archaeologists that new homotypes appear on Earth after there are geomagnetic field reversals. Volcanic eruptions and geomagnetic field reversals could cause temporary changes in the amount of radiation impacting on the Earth. This would cause nitrogen to ionize and react with ozone to form nitrates. Less ozone would make it possible for higher levels of ultraviolet light to reach the Earth's surface. This light would carry ultra <coughs> would make it in the soil, collecting the areas near water and make nearby plants more lush. The nitrates which made it to the soil would collect in areas near water and make nearby plants more lush. This view is supported by the appearance of mineral-rich soil in areas where volcanoes have recently erupted. The transmutation of one race into another probably took place in mountain ranges. The various races usually refer to mountains in their origin myths. For example, Europeans claim that they originated in the Caucasus Mountains. The ancient Egyptians claimed they originated in the mountains of the moon. This suggests that mountains play a very important role in the origin of these races. The probable place for these transmutations were probably in the mountains. Let's look at this whole myth about the uh, mountains of the moon. The mountains of the moon are located in East Africa. Isn't it interesting that it is here in East Africa that archaeologists found most of the ancient traces of man and man-like creatures. It is also interesting that, that in this part of East Africa, there has been numerous earthquakes that have impacted on the land. The bombardment of tribes in the mountains of the moon and other areas in ancient times led to the rise of the various types of humans and human-like creatures that once inhabited the world. The cosmic nitrogenes, given the large number that would fall in an area during a geomagnetic field reversal, would cause new genetic shuffles within the DNA of the affected populations and be regulatory ni nigra genes. These regulatory genes would cause the genetic information inside chromosomes to switch on structural genes, which would make new species appear in the population affected by the cosmic gene fallout doing sex reprodu reproduction. The cosmic regulatory Nigra genes probably causes changes in species by reacting to the transpons or jumping genes of DNA. In this way, the genetic information housed in a chromosome would change, since the regulatory gene would stimulate specific genes which bring into being the new species. The presence of junk DNA which represents about 99% of the DNA, which does not transmit information to the cell because it is uncoded, may be coded by the cosmic genes during magnetic field reversals. The coding of junk DNA by concentrated levels of black genes may cause gene shuffling that leads to new human species. Scientists believe that the particles reside in the interplanetary dust clouds which extend beyond the planets. They guess estimate that black genes can live no longer than 10,000 to 100,000 years, yet they are much older than this. Scientists speculate that this genetic material must be replenished from some larger parent bodies. Dr. D. E. Brownlee of the University of Washington, Seattle thinks that the black genes are interplanetary and may be, and may be coming from the disaggregate nation of comets. The structure of amino acids from which protein is formed is the chief building block of life. It is always left-handed. Yet when these acids are th synthesized in a laboratory, they are half right-handed and left-handed. However, when amino acids forming proteins are crystallized, the oscillations of light waves passing through them always rotate to the left. This demonstrates that they are one-sided molecular structure. Researchers at the University of Arizona in Tucson report that left-handed amino acids predominate in meteorites. This is a significant study because it illustrates that cosmic Niagara genes are regulatory genes. Since terrestrial genes are usually both right and left-handed, 
but are but are one-sided in their molecular structure, increases in the number of left-handed genes in a person's system due to Nigro gene fallout and absorption by the human subjects due to direct contamination and the eating of foods contaminated by Nigro genes would dominate and change the former DNA code into a new one. Since only 1% of all DNA constitute protein, the rest is genome. As mentioned earlier, the cosmic black gene changes the genetic information in chromosomes to switch on structural genes which would make new species appear within affected populations during sexual reproduction. The junk DNA or genome DNA, which is uncoded, is probably coded by cosmic black genes. The coding of junk DNA by concentrated levels of cosmic black genetic material, which was absorbed by the eumelanized skin of our ancestors and carried and distributed throughout the body by the blood circulation, led to the gene shuffling that leads to new human species. Since genome DNA is 99% of the cell, the black genes probably code the genome DNA with new instructions that cause it to, to make new traits in the offspring of populations contaminated by extreme cosmic black gene fallout. If my hypothesis is correct, junk DNA is really selfish DNA. This fact was proven by the university researcher Ford Doolittle, Carmen Spinoza of Delhouse University in Nova Scotia, and Leslie Orgo and Francis Crick of Salk Institute in California. Since only a small portion of DNA influenced replication, whenever the creator sends enough black genes to Earth coded to produce new species, it would join with DNA and use replication of new species and it would dominate the former DNA instructions present before the entrance of the black genes into the cell and pass on the new genetic material from the parent to the progeny through succeeding generations. This is why we find that there's no missing link. This is why we find that there's changes in the races, but the races usually still have traits that refer back to their African or Australoid origins. In other words, in a sense, there is maybe one race and that is the black race, but because of the fact that God sends down these various black genes, these nigra genes, there's a changes in the various hominids that lead to the uh, various races. If this theory is correct, the creator makes 99% of the DNA genome so he can make new life forms at will. Instead of the majority of genome DNA being junk, it is only selfish waiting patiently to be put into action by the black genes sent to us from heaven.